Good evening to everyone. My name is Peggy Trivis, and I'll be your moderator for this evening's lecture. I'd like to welcome you to the Syracuse branch. And this is a school and not a church, neither are we affiliated with any religious organizations. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious and scientific research organization that is dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in 1958. Since that time, we have established branch schools across the United States, Canada, and other foreign countries. The Syracuse branch was established in 1969. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge the Dean of the Syracuse branch, Dr. Patrick Trivison, and our president, Dr. Robert Welch. Now, in this school and throughout the lecture this evening, we'll be using a true, correct, and original name and title, the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. This has been uh, substituted with a title, Lord. For the Word or Son, we use a divine title, Elohim. This has been substituted with the erroneous title, God. And the name of the Holy Spirit manifesting in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. This has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. We now know each Lord must have a name. Each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title, which means that Elohim is the title that your Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it's an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into an encyclopedia dictionary would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language contain any character or letter in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by the letter J. Neither was there a J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible in untrue renderings of the true name of the Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Now Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, is pure spirit. And in His pure spirit state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize Himself because the cloud uh, has no particular descriptive shape and form. And if you take a look at this chart, you'll see that we have this cloud, fiery cloud, painted all the way around the edges of the chart, and everything on the chart abides within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within this pure spirit state of Yahweh. And Yahweh, knowing that man cannot perceive of him in this pure spirit state, takes on shape and takes on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being. That is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This visionary shape and form can only be seen by divine vision and only understood by divine revelation. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world has come to know as Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves, what was the name of the Savior during the time that he did walk the earth plane? You can get a better understanding of his name and title by reading a preface to a holy name Bible. Also in this school we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. We call it a divine pattern because this is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt and into the wilderness of Sinai, he then called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and gave him the, the vision of this tabernacle pattern. Moses was instructed to return to the wilderness and build one exactly as he had seen in the mount. This tabernacle pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof 
how that everything is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now, in this school, we have 10 primary constitutional aims or objectives, and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to, incur to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there's no other name, given among men whereby a man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua Messiah. Tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah with a hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. I'd like to have this evening's meeting dedicated with prayer by Dr. Tracy Bennett. That will be followed by a scripture reading, which is Isaiah 43. Our scripture readers are Dr. Deb Cometti and Dr. Scott Miller. And that'll do it. Let us all take a moment, bow our hearts and minds, and give thanks to Yahweh, our wonderful, glorious creator who has brought us out of the darkness of the world and shown us his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan, which is for our salvation. We were so undeserving of this and should give thanks every moment of our life that we have been given such a wonderful blessing. Let us all say in unison, Hallelujah. Good evening, class. Good evening. Tonight's scripture will be read out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically comparing with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association. And Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, has like two fewer verses in it than the King James, so if you notice that, that's why. Isaiah 43, But now thus saith Yahweh that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am Yahweh thy Elohim, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Saba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast become, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, Give up, and to the south, Keep not back. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. 
even everyone that is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes, and the deaf that have ears. Let all nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled. Whom among them can declare this, and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses, that they may be justified, or let them hear and say, It is truth. Ye are my witnesses, saith Yahweh, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was nothing formed of El, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am Yahweh, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared, and have saved, and I have showed, when there was no strange El among you. Therefore you are my witnesses, saith Yahweh, that I am Elohim. Yea, from the first day I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall hinder? Thus saith Yahweh, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon, and have brought down all their bars, and Chaldeans, and the ships of their joyful songs. I am Yahweh, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith Yahweh, which maketh a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and pow the power, they shall lie down together. They shall not rise, they are extinct, they are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, now it shall spring forth, ye shall not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself, they shall show forth my praise. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob, but thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings, neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. Thou hast bought me no sweet cane with money, neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices. But thou hast made me to serve with thy sins, thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Put me in remembrance, let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. That's Isaiah the 43rd chapter in the Holy Name Bible. Thank you, um, Dr. Bennett and Dr. Scott Miller. <laughs> I can't think of his name here at the time. Looking right at him, can't think of his name. Thank you, guys. And our first speaker, um, I'd like to introduce Dr. Lloyd Bennett from our Syracuse class. Good evening, class. Good evening. Um, very glad to be here tonight. Glad to see you all. Um, let's see. Uh, my mind is still back on uh, Revelations, because I think we went over it for <clears throat> a couple, three weeks. So I'm always a week or two behind everything, so, you know. So let's... Uh, we could just for a little bit go to Revelations. Twelfth chapter, sorry. Start at one or seven? Se seven? Seven. Revelation 12 and seven. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, 
who deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Great. Okay, start back up in 7, Deb, okay. if you could. And there was war in heaven. Now, there was a war in heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, see, if you were just reading this, and Yahshua hasn't revealed, you know, it, I mean, you all know where I'm going with that, but if you haven't, if a regular person was to read this, there was a war in heaven. Now, think about it. All people think about your, your I don't want to, the carnal mind, you know, but people on the tapes and things, but uh, if someone who the Spirit has not revealed this to read that, I guess that's a better way to say it, and said to, and read that there was a war in heaven. I mean, the world thinks about heaven, and the, this is the people, let's say, that believe in their God, and could there be a war in heaven? I mean, think about it. That's, uh, if you're a religious person, that's what you think about. You think about heaven. No matter what you think about the flesh or what's going there, whatever they're thinking of, because it seems to vary a little, I guess, but that there could actually be a war in the only place that they thought they might have peace. And with no understanding from Yahshua, this could just, it's like, oh, well, I just go on to the next thing, right? I mean, that's a tough one for a carnal mind, right? Yep. So there was a war in heaven. Go ahead. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. So they were fighting. They were actually fighting in heaven in this war. Okay? We all, we read this a hundred times. It's one of my favorites, and I'll explain there why. All right, go ahead. And prevailed not. Now, um, the dragon did not prevail. He didn't win. Okay, go ahead. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. He was cast out, right? Cast out of heaven. <laughs> okay, go ahead. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. How much of the world? Whole world. He deceived the whole world. Now, why did he deceive the whole world? Because mm -hmm. he was cast out in, go ahead. Who deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. He was cast out into the earth. Now, see, you read that, you start to understand. Now, see, I went to the school for a long time, and I read that, and yup, he was cast into the earth, you know, and uh, it never really sunk in until I was sitting back there and someone was up, yeah, he was cast into the earth, and that's why we have so many wars, and it was like I got slapped right side the head. <gasps> it's like I read this a million times, you know, with everybody else that's read it a million times, but it was like <gasps> suffering. Yep. That's, it's, then little by little, it's like, I'm just telling you where I went with this. Right. It's a, I mean, I don't, everybody has their own testimony as to how different things affected them and how they've learned them. And, but then little by little, Yahshua gave this, it's like, I was it start to understand why there's so many wars in earth on the earth there was wars between nations there's wars within nations civil wars all over the place there's wars with your neighbor <laughs> I think that's funny but it's not I mean and then there's wars within yourself. What's that mean? No peace. So we can, you could be a, walking around in a war and still have peace. That's why we come here. We're all getting old, tired, everything hurts, but we can find peace through Yahshua. We get that, you know? It's, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm.
Now, the reason this is on my mind, because it's like all we hear about is wars and rumors of wars, and then this stuff going on in Ukraine with Russia and all that. It's like one more war. It seems like we can't go very long, and then we're involved in another war. You know what I mean? And the media, oh, they just love to just drown you with this stuff. It's like, what is it? They say that the, the kids especially have suffered terrible through the crud. I mean, you know what I mean? They're shutting the house, listening to all this. And they, have, they don't have a, we are so blessed to be able to come down here and hear this. And, and understand why. It's just a blessing. Now, I just want to talk about Ukraine a couple minutes, and I got a couple things to do, and I'll just sit down. But I had this is I just keeps going over in my head, and I can't. Uh, now, now, see, the everybody Russia is doing whatever Ukraine. I don't even want to get into the this and that's of it, but um, the I read a couple interesting notes on this as far as uh, Putin goes. Net, they say one of the the scariest things with Putin is they say, because I read his, his, what he's done, and you know, if something's going on, if I get a chance, I like to go in and read about it. That he has a low fear factor. Um, I forget how it was worded. I mean, we're always encouraged here. If someone like me gets up, can't remember, squat. Um, it's like, yeah, well, let me look that up. Like, oh, was it a couple months ago I was on the floor and I couldn't remember uh, the people in that church. Was it Spain? Peg, it was you. And right there you're on your phone checking it. Now, someone um, in some other whatever would say, oh, they don't believe me. They're checking it out. You know what I mean? Why, why would she do that? It's like, you know, but no, that's like, yeah. Peg's checking it out because she cares, and we all care, and we want it right. So that's like, that's cool, you know? So you check these things out, but they say he has like a low fear factor. And that's what makes, you know, all of these, the media, that's what they, they make, there's this fear that he, he's, he's not afraid of the consequences of things. I guess to say it that way, paraphrasing, okay? I mean, whatever his motivation, I don't know, you can't believe only half of what you hear, but he's in doing his business in Ukraine there. But one of the things in uh, Russia is the media, he controls the whole media. Right. You, don't, you don't know what's going on. Right. Now, in Ukraine, um, Zelensky, I think I'm pronouncing it right, you know, he used to be a comedian. He's got quite the colored history himself. And he's a multimillionaire. He's got, uh, so he's good on camera. But he controls all his media. So nothing gets out that um, he doesn't allow to be heard. They shut down all amateur radio in Ukraine. So you can't find out what's, I don't know how they did that, but Probably a Gordon question, but uh, <clears throat> so I'm thinking, wow. And then um, the humanitarian thing, you know, they're killing people and doing this and doing that. And then I heard something on a different. Um, let me have um, no, not none righteous, not one. And let's just get that in Matthew. The wars and. Rumors of wars, just to, uh, so we're all on the same page. Thank you. Let me have the, no, righteous, no, not one, if I could. I know Romans I've, 3 and 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Now see, <clears throat> that just plain, there is none righteous. So, um, if... It's like, oh, yeah, you know, this poor little... No, he's just as bad as uh, Putin. Why? Because he's not led by the Spirit. He is led by that other mystery. Just like Putin. 
everybody, everybody, unless Yahshua reveals it to you, is led by this other. That's what the the revelation was. I don't care how colorful he is, or how handsome he is, or how much money they have. The Pope himself is this fancy, and he's like one of them right up there, just like uh, these two. No, oh, it's. It, it, it just it was over and over my head because yeah he's there is no difference so then the media was talking about and they I'll get over this and then uh, but the media is talking about you know the humanitarian thing and everything this and that and I then I heard something else on the was it the radio or it doesn't matter and um, I did a little research <laughs> this is so colorful I did this research because what are we taught since we got here? Check it out. Check it out. And I, and just so happens for two or three weeks we were working with the uh, 12th chapter of Revelation. So I looked it up a little bit and then I started thinking, wow, we got our own history here. <laughs> That'd be a good Ricky question there, history here. And then I'm thinking, over there in uh, England, wow, they conquered more countries or controlled. But it's not like people just welcome them in. So then I'm thinking, <clears throat> the Indians here. So all these things start going through my head about uh, there is none righteous. Sometimes these things just get more real and more real. Mm -hmm. Then I, ch I did a little search on the Iraq war, and <clears throat> well, Afghanistan's the first one here, and how, because they were talking about civilians dying over there. <clears throat> and it said uh, 47,000 civilians died during the war. Now, I, did, I didn't even bother checking on which war, both wars, or how they happened, and uh, it's like, whoa. Then I thought, what was it, just three or four weeks ago, or three or four months ago, that missile that hit that house in Afghanistan killed six or seven kids? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that sounds like a humanitarian thing. You know? I mean, I, these things, they're, they're but there was a war in heaven. There's a war in heaven. You don't even believe the people in I Iraqi war that were civilians that were killed. I know you want to, it's like, and then I checked another place, and they're about here, about there. <clears throat> it's just, it's not just Putin. It's everybody. Because where was Satan cast out in two. The whole world. Then you're going to love this one. All the, the, I, I did a search of the stuff that uh, we left behind over there in Afghanistan. And I know it's shaking your head. It's like, does anybody hear the, or read any of the list? <laughs> Nobody did? You really got, I'm just going to give you this quick. And, because uh, I haven't been up too long, so I'll, uh, it's, it's, it's like the, the Taliban over there is the, they're better armed than a lot of countries right now. And they say, well, what about being able to use it? Well, oh, I got to read this to you. You're just going to love this. It's like, but do your own search. I took a picture of it. All right, you're gonna it's like. Uh -huh. um, now this is the one, and they they're all about the same. They vary because nobody knows exactly sure. Twenty-two thousand Humvees, six hundred thirty-four of these armored things. I don't know what they are. Mine-proof vehicles, one hundred fifty-five. There's there's the armored vehicles, forty-two thousand trucks and SUVs, 64,000 machine guns. Oh, there's trucks, radios, gas masks, rifles. Here's the good one. 33 
Black Hawk, no, yes, 33 Black Hawk helicopters. Mm. They're like 50 million a piece. <laughs> 33 Black, it's, I mean, I shouldn't even be laughing up here. But we can, because we can be a good cheer and know why there's a war in the earth or why there's rumors of wars or where there's wars after wars. This is just a big eye opener. I won't even read the rest of this, the rest of the aircraft, but I got to read you this one paragraph, maybe I get depth to it. And don't believe this, I mean right off the bat he said something in the beginning, it's like, but, <laughs> I just can't even, All right, just that one paragraph depth. I took a picture of it because I did a search to find this stuff out. Go ahead, Deb. The Taliban now has more Black Hawk helicopters than 85% of the countries in the world. Now, excuse me. Now, see that? It was like, because, you know, I look at all this stuff with, uh, you know, then 85% of countries in the world. Well, I mean, a lot of countries, it's, are they really even going to own a Black Hawk helicopter? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's some of the, all right, go ahead, but the, the good parts, go ahead, I'm sorry. Congressman Jim Banks, a veteran, lamented, but it's not just weapons. They have night vision goggles, body armor, and unbelievably, the Taliban now has biometric devices. They have what? Biometric. Devices, okay. Devices. Listen to this. Which have the fingerprints, eye scans, and biographical information of all of the Afghans who helped us and were on our side over the last 20 years. There is no plan by the administration to get those weapons back. There is no plan to account for any of this equipment or these weapons. That's good. I don't want to go on with this because it is disturbing, the whole thing, but it's like um, there was a war in heaven right mm -hmm. and to think that everybody else everybody else's country is uh the only ones no it's because everybody how's that say that quote uh, everybody um everybody is oh you just read it for me out of the book oh there's none righteous yeah no, not oh one. sorry yes there is none righteous no not one not one you have to come down here, Yash, if you're invited, Yashua invite you down here. Some people screaming and fighting and some people, um, they just couldn't get in, wait to get in here. You know what I mean? And there's so many people that come down to rescue their mate or partner or friend. I can't even believe it, after hearing all these stories of people that come down here to rescue a loved one. Mm -hmm. And they're still here. <laughs> it's, it's really, it, it's, uh, what are you doing? It's like, is it? so if you come down here and you listen to this great, and I mean, when I say it's just great, and we're so blessed to be here, and we all say this, but all it takes is like an hour or so on the computer and looking this up and thinking, wait a minute, you could just go on for hours, but that won't benefit anybody. It just eats up floor time with stuff that we basically all know. We're up here to praise Yahshua. Praise Yahshua. We, the, he's our only hope of salvation in a world that's riddled with wars and hatred. Mm -hmm. There's a place we can go and learn about the creator of heaven and earth. And there's nothing that can be compared about with that. Right. We, it just, in, like I said, we all say the same thing and how true it is. And sometimes it just takes something like this to go, holy suffering. Mm -hmm. Man, is that the statement or what? Mm -hmm. There was a war in heaven, in heaven of all places. And now it's down here. And yep, the topper is, each one of us is a country, um, or uh, what's the other word? So there could be a war amidst anybody. It just seems to get better all the time. But we, we have a hope. 
we have a hope of salvation. <laughs> Yahshua has taken us this far. He's not dropping us now. No. We have, we have faith. We've seen too many witnesses. We've seen too many witnesses since we've come down here how Yahshua fulfills everything that he said he would do. He's not dropping us. No. No, the love we have for him, he gave us. He wouldn't give us that love for him and let us go. Right. No, we have faith that he's going to get us through all this. Yep. It doesn't matter what people are doing to each other out there as far as our faith and this truth goes. We care what goes on out there because we have a heart. We care. We are not cold. We care about what goes on. We feel bad when people are abused and stuff like that happens to them. But we can understand why that is. Because there was a war in heaven. And what a joy it is to be able to understand some of these things that go on in the world and feel comfortable about them. Like how the comfort we got out of understanding this tabernacle. The, the to me, that was just the, the comfort involved in it. And then every once in a while, someone would put, do something and go by the tabernacle, you know. And it was like, wow, look at that, will you? And then it might be a little while later, or maybe it's something that you looked at yourself, that revelation of those little things, there's something else. But it is the pattern of everything. <laughs> that just... There's a couple, there's some things that uh, are just, oh, they're so eye-opening. And they're, it's like the comfort with under, seeing some of these things lined up in that tabernacle. When, when it, in the book it says it's a pattern of all things. I mean, that's, this is, it's amazing. And there's just this little bit of us, what, 17 tonight. I always like to check. Uh, Frank's math. <laughs> Hide in the corner back there, the two of us. But uh, I hope this wasn't off color for anybody. Um, but it's truly um, everybody out there um, is they're of the world until Yahshua chooses to reveal himself to them. Right. We can only look at it and help strengthen the principles that, we're, that we've learned all these years to help strengthen the principles of the things we see and understand that's the way it is. Joshua will take care of us. Right. And we're thankful for that. Um, I hope that wasn't too of a... But um, all praise and glory goes to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bennett. And our next speaker will be Dr. Bill Warren. Evening, Chris. Hi, Bill. Uh, I got nothing. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy. Um, well. I am glad to be here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not up here, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in the classroom. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that uh, that war stuff is just it's it's pretty crazy. It's 
mind-boggling the things that that are happening over there. <clears throat> and yet, on the other hand, and some people may, might not even like this, but I'm I'm thinking. I don't know why they never probe, and I'm talking about the media, people that are overseeing all this stuff to, you know, to really document what is going on. Um, nobody ever really um, tries to find out why Ukraine uh, didn't join NATO. I don't get that. I mean, if they did, this would be a whole different thing. Mm. It would be Putin declaring war on the world, oh. you know, mm -hmm. and um, they, they could have. I mean, they've been free, as it were, independent is probably a better word for the last 30 years. And it was a conscious decision on their part sometime before Zelensky got in office. Uh, but there was a conscious decision on their part, from what I've read, to not join NATO and to remain independent. Which I can't help but uh, think about that scripture in Revelation. Um, lukewarm. Mm -hmm. Is that Revelation 3? <clears throat> <clears throat> Revelation 3 and um, I'll pick, I guess, 15. Revelation 3 and 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. I will spew thee out of my mouth, Yahweh Elohim says. That's, that's, you know, somebody that's going to sit on the fence and, you know, decide when it's convenient for them uh, to get to one side or the other. Not that we really have a choice of our own. There's a purpose in operation, and that's of Yahweh. And like Lloyd said, none righteous. No, not one. Any, any that are, it, it's not of yourself. It's of right. Yahweh's purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's just being carried out. But the manifestation, I mean, there were wars. There were wars back here with Israel. Um, and there's a war now. There's a war now, but it's not physical. The, the physical war, what's going on there in Ukraine, is really just an example of the spiritual battle. And um, it's not really even our battle. That's between Yahshua and the mystery, the mystery of righteousness and the mystery of iniquity. Okay, and, that, and that was set up before the foundation of the world. Way back here when he was taking on shape and form. And he... Um, and he created this purpose, and part of that, right from the get-go, was that there's two mysteries in operation. The mystery of iniquity and the mystery of righteousness. So you see those things manifest. That's why I, I kind of have a hard time with Ukraine, because, you know, on one side you got them manifesting independence and freedom, but then on the other, like I say, they, they had a choice for the last 30 years to have joined NATO and to get on a side where he wouldn't be fighting Putin by himself. Mm. So I'm really not quite sure what to make of that, but mm -hmm. um, I'm just glad that we have a way of knowing our creator. And um, well, we went to the, uh, the Chicago thing, what was it, a couple? three weeks ago and th that was really good because it's been a long time 
uh, gosh, three years? Yeah. And it was, it was really good. Um, the lectures were excellent, and uh, the unity that you felt seeing the brethren was just great. Um, and uh, I think Deb might even brought up, and I don't even know who it was that um, was lecturing on uh, baptism. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Carmen, do you remember? There's a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, and the fulfillment. Why don't we Why don't we start there? Let's get um, Matthew uh, five. Three thirteen. Pardon? Three thirteen? No, five. Uh, oh, five. Yeah, we'll go back. We'll go back to that after. Five uh, seventeen yeah. eighteen. Matthew five. Because really, the baptism. What what's Yeshua doing? What's he doing? Whenever he's doing anything, when he's in the flesh, mm -hmm. he's fulfilling. Go ahead. Matthew five and seventeen. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Which, which I, I really am getting to like that word because there's so much in it. Um, he fulfilled in that this law was given down to Israel and that they were this was their way of salvation when they broke the law this tabernacle was built in the wilderness so that something else could die instead of them when they sinned um, and and Yahshua came in to take this law out of the way or to finish it which uh, most times is the way we're working with fulfillment is that he's fulfilling or finishing this law and taking it out of the way um, because it was a standard of righteousness and this wasn't Yahweh's long-term purpose this was temporary that's why we have this this chart here showing these temporary things that the uh, the Ten Commandments, or actually some 613 laws and suppers and baptisms and sacrifices and circumcisions and all of that was temporary, which meant that there was a time that it had to run. And that's what it shows on this chart, where this law came in and there was a time for this law to run. And there was a time for it to end. And that's what Yahshua came in to do, is end that law. But he also fulfilled things that were written in the law and the prophets. There was not an ending, but a fulfillment to show that he was the one that was to come. Um, why don't you read that again? 5.17. Matthew 5.17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. See now, who's he talking to here? Isn't he talking to the scribes and the Pharisees and they're getting upset that he's running around and messing with their law because they took this law that was given from Yahweh Elohim and turned it into what they wanted it to be in that they had control over the people. So now here comes Yahshua on the scene and he starts messing with this thing and uh, read it again think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets see because that's exactly what they were worried about was you're you're messing with our control over the people I, I mean that's kind of Putin's thing too is he wants he wants control right. um, go ahead I am not come to destroy but to fulfill see now what's he coming to fulfill the law and the prophets is what he's saying there. Now, is that this law? 
No, that's what's written in your book. The first five books of Moses and the next, uh, what is it, 34 or 34 books as the law and the prophets. He came in to, read it again, <laughs> sorry. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the he prophets. He didn't come to destroy the law and the prophets. Those are his witnesses. It, it says that right here on this chart, I think. The, the law. Oh yeah, the law and the prophets, they're his witnesses. He's not going to destroy those. Go ahead. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Right, read. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. From the law. Now what's that talking about? That's not talking about the law and the prophets. That's talking about this law that was given to Israel. And this is intended to end. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he's doing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Go ahead, finish that. Till all be fulfilled. So, so everything that he's doing is, is to fill, fulfill these, these things of the law to take it out of the way. And he is actually... Yahweh Elohim taken on the flesh in part, not in totality, because, well, you'd have to go back into numbers. We're not going to do that. But the, the husband, see, this was a marriage here, and the husband spoke this law, held his peace when she agreed to do it. Now, when she couldn't do it, which, like uh, Lloyd said, none found righteous, mm -hmm. even back here. Matter of fact, especially back here, and the reason I say that is this came in to make sin more obvious or to make sin exceedingly sinful. So he has to come in as the husband and fulfill this law because she couldn't keep it. And that, like I say, it's in uh, Numbers, the 30th chapter about a husband and a wife and when she vows a vow and so on and so forth. So he comes in to finish this. Now, part of this was this water baptism. And the world looks at this and thinks that he's doing this, so we've got to do what Jesus does. <laughs> and like was said several times at the, at the Chicago event, nobody got up on this cross, though. They, they all do these things, and they pick and choose what they want to do, but, you know, there's where push come to shove. Nobody's jumping up on that cross. So now this, the world, thinks that he started this, and he didn't. Um, it was actually instituted way back in the beginning with Yahweh Elohim creating the creation, um, where the, uh, the earth was inundated in water. Mm -hmm. There's water baptism. Uh, let's get 1 Corinthians uh, 10. 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. See, so now this was way back here, uh, some 1,500 years before uh, Yahshua came on the scene. Go ahead. And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So here's all of Israel going through the Red Sea, and it's called right in the book a baptism. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from there, there was just all kinds of baptisms. The, the priest had to be uh, baptized uh, to operate in this uh, by getting in this waiver. Um, the sacrifices had to be baptized or cleansed in this waiver. And there's just all kinds of uh, baptism. But now let's get over to uh, Matthew uh, 3. Matthew 3, 16 through 18. Matthew 3, 16 through 18. Maybe pick it up a little bit. I just wanted to show how there were others that were going to John. Mm -hmm. Matthew 3 and 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. So in other words, uh, John's here at um, uh, where is it? The River Jordan, right? 
he's at the River Jordan and he's baptizing. All the Jews have to go to him to be baptized and they have to um, repent. And so John asked him, have you sinned? And they're confessing, yes. And then he's dunking them in water and baptizing them, like all the religions do out in the world now. All different forms of it, little sprinkling, dunking, all, all kinds of different forms of it. But uh, go ahead, there. Um, he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Yahshua from Galilee to Jordan unto John. So now after all these Jews have come to John and repented and were baptized, now Yahshua comes to John. Go ahead. Then, Yah then cometh Yahshua from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. So now he asked, have you sinned? And of course, Yahshua, the one righteous, mm -hmm. hadn't. So he says, what? I have need to be baptized of thee. I have thee. need to be baptized of thee. And comest thou to me? And you're coming to me to be baptized? Go ahead. And Yahshua answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. So to fulfill all righteousness, or this part of the law that was a standard for righteousness, we have to finish it. Every jot and tittle, didn't it say? Um, to complete it and take it out of the way. Now, um, when they were doing this, it reminded me of uh, something... Um, something else that he was fulfilling in doing this. Uh, it's in Exodus, I think, 14 or 15. Because he fulfilled not just was what was written in, the, um, maybe you could find that, uh, that the world could not contain mm -hmm. the volumes. And the John. Yeah. And there, this is John uh, 21, 25. And there also are many other things that Yahshua did, which if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. So, I mean, the, I mean, we got more than we can handle with the Bible, but if you can imagine all the things that he fulfilled, the world couldn't contain the volumes that it would take to write it down. Right. Do you find it? Um, did you want to stand still and see the salvation? Oh, and no. Um, Exodus 14, what were you? Uh, um, they go through the... When they come to uh, Marah. I think it's 15, now that I think about it. 15. All the waters of Marah, okay. Yeah. Um, maybe 20, Exodus 15 and 22. So yeah. Moses brought Israel yeah. from the Red Sea. Yeah. And they went out into the wilderness of Shur. So after, after they came up out of the Red Sea, Yahweh Elohim brought them up out of the Red Sea, and they were, um, um, I'm not sure where they were on their, well, go ahead and read it. And they went three days into the wilderness. So they went three days into the wilderness. And found no water. And when they came to Marah... So, so really, you have a, a death. They, they were, as it were, dead down here in Egypt in servitude to Pharaoh and that. They were buried in the Red Sea, and they were resurrected into the wilderness of Sinai. And now three days later... Okay. Go ahead. Um, and, and when they went three days in the wilderness and found no water... And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. So they got to this place where there was water, and the water was bad. It was, you know, poisonous or tainted in some way. They couldn't drink it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, therefore, the name of it was called Marah, which means bitter. Mm -hmm. 
And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto Yahweh and said, or and Yahweh showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them. So they cast this tree into these bitter waters, and now they could drink the water. And now if you think about it, here's Yahshua coming to John, and what had just happened? He had just baptized hundreds of thousands of Jews in, in, this, in, in this water, and they were all laden with sin. Right. They, every one of them admitted that. Right. So, in principle, you've got this water that was full of sin, tainted, poisoned, right? And then Yahshua comes along, and he gets buried in that water. And he's taking that sin, or the sin of the world, upon himself. Or he's being, manifesting really a, a, a type of a shadow of being the propitiation for our sins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just thought that was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, well, I, I, you, one thing is, uh, it does talk about a tree being cast into the water, and we just got done with the season, well, the last holiday season, where people cut down trees, and those trees were a type of Yahshua. Mm -hmm. So here's this tree now being put in the water, and the sin being taken on himself. Mm -hmm. So um, that's about all I had to share. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Dr. Warren, and our next speaker will be our uh, president, Dr. Robert Welch. Good evening, everyone. Hey, Bob. Um, I've enjoyed the first two speakers for sure. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm sure that people in the world really don't have a understanding of how these mysteries have um, are going on in the creation because the mere fact that you got so many different religions out here. And uh, it really does have to come down to a, a simplistic thing in the sense that everybody's reading from the same Bible, reading the same words, and yet and still, Yahweh still kept it in a, in a mystery, right? Mm -hmm. And as, you know, people have said tonight, um, how do you do that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and it's, it's almost like uh, how uh, sacred Yahweh's name really is. And how, isn't it ironic that he put it in these Jews way back here to take it out so they didn't blaspheme it. You know, they didn't use it for so long. And <clears throat> what a worse way to blaspheme the name of Yahweh than not to use it. Um, <laughs> You know, we always go into Exodus and show um, the commandments, right? Mm -hmm. And how you're not supposed to take his name. Why don't we just read that if you mm -hmm. got it? <clears throat> how we're not supposed to take his name in vain. In fact, I think the first three commandments are about his name, right? Exodus. Actually, you might as well pick it up, Deb. Okay, if you, 20 and 1. Yeah. Yahweh Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahweh thy Elohim who hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Uh -huh. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So he's brought them out of the, the children of Israel, right? Out of a bondage that they were in for quite some time. 400 years, you'll find out that 
um, you know, generations have went by them being in bondage. Um, go ahead, please. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. So don't be making me out like a bird or an elephant or a lion. Right. You know, when you see Egyptology, right? You yeah. see the Sphinx and all these um, types of sculpture and stuff that looks like an image, right? So Yahweh's telling him right, right up front, don't do that, right? Go ahead. Tom. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, Yahweh thy Elohim, am a jealous Elohim, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So I'm going to have you start it again. There's so much in that. I know. I'm just going to try to break it down a little bit. Thou shalt not bow down thyself so he to, tells, his, go ahead. Mm, to them, nor serve them. Don't buy, bow yourself down to other gods because they're not real, right? Yeah. There's These are manufactured concepts in somebody's mind and said, this is what we're going to worship. And it's all through the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> that's the whole problem with this history back here is there's times when they're doing okay, and then there's times when they just mess up, and Yahweh um, pulls the rug right out from under them. Um, you'll read that there were thousands of people killed up here for being disobedient. Killed off. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, is this a different God? This isn't a different God. I haven't heard all the um, lectures from Chicago yet. I can't wait to hear it. But <clears throat> they're talking about the wrath of Yahweh, right? Yeah. And the thing we have to tell you down here, it's the same God that had wrath back here that is just ready to unleash his wrath at the end of this age. Same one. We're not talking about a different, a different deity, right? Mm -hmm. Well, he's telling them right up front in the commandments, don't do this, do this, right? Go ahead, Deb. Yeah. For I, Yahweh thy Elohim, mm -hmm. am a jealous Elohim. Oh, so Yahweh is a jealous El, right? Yep. He's jealous. He brought this bride. Um, someone was, I think, Bill talking about it tonight. Brought a bride called Israel up to a mountain, and they actually, in in principle, were married there. Right? They said their I do's. Yahweh said, "This is what you're going to do," and they said, "What?" I do. I do, or I'll we'll do that. Mm -hmm. We'll do that. Right? So that's what was going on here. Was a <clears throat> a marriage ceremony at that mountain up there. Go ahead, Deb. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation so, of them. So even he's talking about, well, I'm going to forget the iniquity of the fathers. No. That's not what he said, was it? Could you repeat no. it, Deb? Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So he hasn't even forgot the stuff, that the, the nasty stuff that some of the elders have done. He's going to bring that to the forefront too. He hasn't forgotten. Right? right. We don't have a creator that forgets. Right. Okay, go ahead. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. And showing mercy upon them that what? The, that love me. That love him. And keep my commandments. And keep his commandments. You know, and that's the problem when you try to talk to people. You know, you, 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 people think they have this love for their creator. This love for God because they've gone to church. Mm -hmm. The problem is you really don't know God. That's right. You have not gone somewhere with the understanding to show you what the true love of Yahweh is all about. Right. In his son, Yahshua the Messiah. And the first thing they do or have gotten wrong are the names. You take those names out of the book and, and it doesn't read the same anymore. In fact, it becomes confusing. Over here they saw the God. Over here they didn't see. You can't see God. Right? Mm -hmm. But if you put this, <clears throat> if you put the names where they belong, you put Yahweh in there instead of Lord. Elohim, Yahweh, Elohim is God and Yahshua is Jesus Christ, right? Now this book starts to make sense. And it really takes that, right? 
So here, all the way back here, Yahweh's name, and this was just so instrumental, what went, <clears throat> what went on here, is this was the first time Yahweh's name was opened up and revealed. When Moses went down there and got the name at the burning bush and went into Egypt, they had never heard Yahweh before. And I remember Mitch saying one time, um, Moses goes down there and he tells Aaron and he starts telling people about the name of Yahweh. And then that person tells Yahweh, hey, it's Yahweh. Yahweh's come. He's got a name. It used to be what? What was his name before that? Shaddai. It was El Shaddai. So there was a time when the name Yahweh was not even a, a, a thought in their mind. It wasn't even on their, their, their mouth, see? So now... <clears throat> Moses goes down there with this great name, and it devastates Egypt. And to show what? Yahweh's power. He was just trying to show his, when, the name, when there's a revelation of the name, there's going to be some power manifest. Right? It's going to happen. Um, um, let's keep reading, though. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh the Elohim in vain, for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Mm -hmm. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh the Elohim. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, maidservant, nor any cattle, nor any stranger that is within thy gates. You see how, how, how restrictive some of these laws were, mm -hmm. you know, as Bill was talking about? There, there's a fulfillment going on here because this couldn't make them perfect as pertaining to their what? Conscience. Their conscience. This, this love that Yahweh showed to his bride here, he's, he's shown now through his son, Yahshua Messiah, that Yahshua has a bride. And where are they? Mm-hmm. They're right here on the earth plane. Uh, <clears throat> that spirit of Yahweh Elohim in Yahshua Messiah, that spirit, it took that. <clears throat> and, and, you know, Dr. Kinley in his lectures used to say, they're always trying to catch Yahshua, right? <clears throat> Over there, they're trying to see if he's got a relationship with Mary, Magdalene, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. He's trying to, you know, they're always, they're trying to mess him up anyways, but... As Dr. Kinley said, he said, he was already married. You see, he already was waiting for his bride. And guess where his bride is now? Mm -hmm. Sitting in seats. Yeah. That's where his bride is. And, and not only uh, some of us in the earth plane, but those that went back and resurrected. <clears throat> There's a little picture here, right? How they resurrected and went into Jerusalem on the day of, uh, after the day of Pentecost, right? But it wasn't until Yahshua raised first that the rest of them could come up. So there are, there are sons that make up the bride from the past or back through the law. <clears throat> and there are those that are made up now. And I was thinking about that with Lloydie getting revelation there. It's, it's talking about angels, right, basically. And we always talk about, <clears throat> I'll just go to this chart. We talk about how... <clears throat> with these two mysteries, that these angels were cast down. And then I was th sitting there thinking, I'm thinking, wait a minute, there's some good angels been down here too, right? <laughs> In other words, <clears throat> Satan and his hosts were cast into the earth plane as angelic forms, but you, you start reading over there, and there's not a total lot about angels, right? Because <clears throat> um, when you look at this tabernacle, up here in the most holy place, there were veils between the court roundabout or the holy place and court roundabout. There were veils, so you had these two compartments that were walled basically with with curtains. <clears throat> and um, there's angels painted up on these veils, showing um, that as you go through this progression of one, two, three, you start you could start to see these things. Now, not everybody could go in there and see them, but there was one that could, that high priest, right? So he is aware of those angels. But when you come out to the court roundabout, what do you see? You just don't see them. So, hello, right? We can't see them. So you've got angels in all these compartments, but you don't see them down here. 
because guess where they are? They were in all of us. <laughs> they were in all of us. Uh, uh, the negative angels were in us, and there were also these positive angels that have come down. Um, uh, Bill was over there in Matthew, right? Well, why don't we just grab that real quick? I think it's 121, maybe? Matthew, I'll pick it up in 20. Okay. Uh, Matthew 1 and 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. So... Now, it doesn't say exactly there how, who is this angel anyways? Gabriel. Do, do we know anything about him? Mm -hmm. It's Gabriel, right? Yeah. And Gabriel had a certain purpose. Yeah. See? And um, as Lloyd was talking about over in Revelation, there was another angel that had another purpose. Yeah. Who was that? Satan. Satan. Satan or Michael. Michael and his angels, right? So you had Michael and his angels fighting, <clears throat> and then you had um, Satan and his. So you're picking up this angelic thing going on, but we don't always think about the angels on the good side down here, right? You don't always think about that. I, I, I remember Deb saying it all the time. Well, you don't know about the angels that are in this room, right? <laughs> You really don't know, um, you know, the whole story where Dr. Kinley used to walk down the street and then he'd go around something. <laughs> Did he step in something? No, he was. So he could see things that we just didn't, weren't able to see, right? But not yet and still, <clears throat> just because you can't see them doesn't mean they're there or not there. Not there, yeah. Um, let's, uh, let's just get uh, Hebrews first chapter please and I think you can start it in one there's like I said there's not a ton in the book about you know you'll pick up different ones and we could get it over in Exodus the third chapter um, you'll find in the law where it says we'll send an angel in the way mm -hmm. to keep you mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so there's there's different aspects of, of this angelic going on in a physical creation right mm -hmm. Hebrews 1 and 4, mm -hmm. it's talking about Yahshua being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Mm -hmm. And again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of Yahweh Elohim worship him. And of the angels he saith, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son he saith, thy throne, O Yahweh Elohim, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. So there's a lot going on in, in this. Did you, was that started at one? I started at four. One oh, at four? four? One at one. Can you start at one? Let me just pick up the mm -hmm. thought Elohim, here. who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. So Yahweh has spoke in, in various times, right, down through the law and the prophets, by the prophets. Yes. Uh -huh. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. In, in, in these last days he's spoken to us by his son. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things, mm -hmm. and by whom also he made the worlds. He's appointed heir of all things, and by whom also he made the worlds, right? Go ahead. Who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, and sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. De Deb, there's a whole lot there. I'm going to have you start that again, please. Okay. 
who being the righteousness of his glory. So he's the righteousness of his glory. Yep. So something has glory and something that has righteousness coming out of him. Go ahead. I'm sorry, that was brightness. Oh, brightness? Who being the brightness of his glory. <laughs> who being the brightness of his glory. <laughs> And the express image of his person. That's it. In the expressed ima image of his person. So what we're talking about now is the Godhead, right? Yeah. Or how Yahweh's, and that's the topic here. How is Yahweh existing, right? And you'll read back here in Exodus where when Moses went up that mountain, right, he saw this um, figure in a um, black body. No. Please no. Miss. It was a body of heaven, right, in its clearness up here on the mount. That's what Moses saw. He's seeing this expression, and it's a vision unto him. Remember, he goes up there, and if you ever read the panoramic um, vision pamphlet, where it goes in the details of Dr. Kinley's vision, he talks about Moses <coughs> um, laying his body down, right? Remember how long he was up there? He's up there for a long time? 40 days, 40 nights, and he lays his body down. And in that, in that same pamphlet, Dr. Kinley said, and that's where I laid mine as well. Something to that effect, right? So it, it's, it, it's crazy to read that, to understand that. How is it that Moses and Dr. Kinley could be back here getting this panoramic vision, and they're even, he's, Dr. Kinley's describing the feet of the people coming towards him. They feel this great presence. And as, as Yahweh Elohim expresses himself to them, it says the, they, their bodies were vibrating almost to unconsciousness. Or so, I forget how he words it exactly. His, their bodies were vibrating when this present, this expressed form comes to them. Mm -hmm. Just this ball, all I can imagine is a ball of energy. Mm -hmm. I remember my dad saying one time, he was out on this farm in Marcellus, and the lightning hit a fence line, right? And, and it was a ball of fire. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I did it pressure washing once. And I'm still here to tell about it. It came out of a, right? But it's this dynamic ball of electricity that just and it went down the fence line until it found something. Boom, down it goes to a ground, right? So there's this, so this, you know, you try to put these things together when you read some of these things about this expressed image. And Yahweh has expressed this to his creatures in this earth plane. Um, let's let's continue, Deb. Okay. And the expressed image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. Okay, upholding all things by the word of his power. Don't we call this the word of Yahweh? Over there in John, we could get that and talk about how the in the beginning was the word. The word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. Yeah, that, that's talking about this breakdown of how this expression of Yahweh's purpose comes down as what we call the Godhead. <clears throat> Go ahead, Deb, if you got it. <clears throat> when he had himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on at, high. At he, he and a few others. He it, had by himself. He had, I can't trick Deb at all. <laughs> <clears throat> he had by himself what, Deb? Purged our sins. Purged our sins, you know. And uh, somebody was talking about it not too long ago where, you know, we, we read 1 Corinthians all the time, the 15th chapter about the gospel. And we always, uh, do you want to grab it, Scott? Sure. If you, if you don't mind. Um, and sometimes we, we, we don't pick up on the sin part of it, is what I'm trying to get at. Um, wherever you think you could pick it up. Um, how about one? Okay. <laughs> okay. First Corinthians 15 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Moreover, brethren, this is Paul, right? Trying to talk to these mm -hmm. Corinthians over there. I declare, make clear unto you the gospel. Go ahead. Which I preached unto you. Which I preached unto you, right? Which also you have received, and wherein you stand. Now you've received it. I was there with you. I preached it to you. You received it, and wherein you what? Stand. You stand in that gospel, right? That's what he's. He's. Uh, this is First Corinthians, right? 
And things weren't so smooth because he had to write 2 Corinthians, right? These are letters to encourage the brethren in these different cities and stuff, right? Please read. <clears throat> By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you. So this gospel can save you if you preach, or if you what, I'm sorry? If you keep in memory. If you keep it in memory. Oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm getting senile. I'm, right? Um, there's, you know, this Alzheimer's and dementia and these things that come out. I mean, I'm finding it myself. You go in the garage, you're looking for something, and you turn around, and I, I can't even remember what I came in here for. Has that ever happened to anybody? Absolutely. Right? And then you go back and you try to retrace your steps. I was over here, I think, I think, oh yes, that's right, a pair of pliers. Right? <laughs> oh, I got it. I traced my, yep. anyway, right? That's but right. this is something that you're not going to forget, right? This is something that's in your soul, right? Even if we lose our mental faculties, he's put it in us. We have a soul to be resurrected and go on. Even if we all get dementia, right? Please read. Go ahead, Scott. <clears throat> if you keep in memory what I preached unto you. Please keep in memory what Paul preached unto them. Go ahead. Unless you have believed in vain. Have you believed in vain? You just got to believe this. He's over in the 15th chapter of Corinthians, right? So he's gone through 14 chapters. And this is the summation down at the end of the thing. Believe in this and stand in it. Go ahead, Scott. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. I, I'm just going to give you what I received. What more can any of us do? Right? Some are given uh, 10 talents. Some are given 50. Some are given 80. Right? There's parables like that over there. That, you know, but the whole point is, uh, Frank always comes out with that um, cor correlation over there, right? The parable of the penny. We're all working down here. Some have been in here for 45, 50 years, whatever, right? And some come just through the door. And they could get their penny as well as our penny, but it's the same. We are saved in that, right? Go ahead, Scott. How that Yahshua died for our sins according to the Scripture. And that's what I was bringing up. How, Yash, how Yahshua died for our sins. Right? And, I, and, and for a while I got to say, yeah, I guess I was forgetting about that. <laughs> he died for our sins, right? He died, go ahead, repeat it. How that Yahshua died for our sins. How that Yahshua died for our sins. According to the scripture. According to the, he died accordingly. Not to the, not to the um, Jews' con concepts of what the law meant. He, he wasn't, can you imagine uh, uh, sitting up there and conceiving of a purpose and plan of himself and think that he's going to put anything in any carnal man's mind or give him any power to do that? Right. This is Yahweh's purpose. This is about his salvation, and that's what he's doing to us. He's saving out of this predicament that Lloydie was talking about. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm hmm He's saving us from the fight that's going on here where you can't see the angels. We're beat up by them. You know you are. We all are. We're beat up by these angels. Right? But, <clears throat> you know that Yahweh made the devil the way he is because he's an asset and not a liability, I think is the way Dr. Kinley used to say it, right? He is an asset to the person, uh, to the purpose, even though he has this negative nature about him. It's a, an opposite of his, Yahweh's, um, Yahweh's being himself. He has to have an, an opposite or antithesis, the big word, right? Yeah. Of how <clears throat> Yahweh can show that he is the one. And he is the only one. That's what our scripture is about. How I, I, I'm Yahweh and there is none else. I know not anymore. He looks around. There's nobody, there's nobody there. There's not another creature or character that can take away our sins. And he, we came down here and this gospel has humbled our hearts. Mm -hmm. Knowing that there's, right? That we need a savior. That we were sinners. 
in that it's, oh boy, you know, it gets into Romans over there. How the carnal mind is enmity with Yahweh, right? Our, our minds, before we came in and had an understanding in this class, our minds had a problem. We were at enmity. What does that mean? We were enemies. We were enemies against. Our, our thinking was, it was, it was disgusting to, to Yahweh, even though he made us. He knew the way we were going to think, but he also knew that we needed a Savior. He knew that up front, right? And he declares the end from the beginning. And, you know, that's one of the most critical statements in the Bible, I think, that Yahweh has had the ability and has done a declaration of his purpose right from the get-go when there was no one else around him except those that body of Yahshua, <clears throat> those treasured souls were put together in him right from the beginning. And we're just finding out how that works. From the beginning, he has allowed us to come, and in, in, in the speakers have discussed that tonight, how they've, dis they've allowed us, right, mm -hmm. to, to be part of this great gospel. Where our sin, <clears throat> thank you, where our sins are relieved. Can you repeat that, Scott? And I'll just pick back up here. <clears throat> um, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, mm -hmm. that Yahshua died for our sins according to the Scripture. He did it, and he did it according to something, and that's what the world has missed. Yes, they can make an, they can make a, they can read Exodus. They know there's a lamb back there, <clears throat> right? They know some of these things that are going on here. There are people that know the book way much better than we do. <laughs> don't, don't think they don't. But what they haven't got is the purpose in how this pattern functions and works in the creation. Right? They, don't, they don't understand that. That's the key to opening up all these scriptures. Um, was that about it there, Scott? Uh, one more. And okay. then he was buried, and then he rose again the third day, according to the Scripture. So when he was buried, he died, he was buried, and <clears throat> raised according to the Scriptures. So everything is in accord, or at one with the Scriptures coming down through. And he put these prophets in here, <clears throat> he put these positive um, people into his purpose to bring the purpose on down so that both mysteries were going on all the way down, right? They were, they were trailing each other. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to pick that up because we're talking about Yahshua the Messiah and he's doing this because of the sin that was so easily set upon us, right? And that was so easy to do. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you, Scott. Can, can you get that? Were you still there, Deb? I wanted to continue in Hebrews. Uh, yeah. If you were there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let me see. I'll pick it up at four. Being made so much better than the angels, as he hath inherit, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. He's obtained a more excellent name than who, Deb? The angels. Than the angels. There's angels, which are pretty cool, right? Absolutely. But he's got a better name than the angels. Go ahead. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, mm -hmm. this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Okay, so he's, a, this, he's picking up the, he's a, this begotten son. Yep. Do you want to get a, a quick, uh, Scott, over in, um, in John, uh, is it 14 or below, mm -hmm. down there where it picks yep. up the begotten son? The so there's... <clears throat> there's uh, <clears throat> there's a son of perdition, right? And then there's the righteous son. <clears throat> and we're just going to read about, if mm -hmm. you can find it. Mm -hmm. um, Is it no 14? No man has seen Yahweh at any time. John, John 1, 1. 14. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the begotten son in 18. Yeah. John 1 and 14. Mm -hmm. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, Full yeah. of grace and truth. Okay, I'm just, I just want to um, 
tell folks where we're we're reading here. We're still kind of considering this God or this um, Godhead and how it works, right? It has to come down from a pure spirit state, comes down to an intermediate shape and form, <clears throat> pure spirit state, intermediate shape and form, and then it has to come down into the flesh. Into the flesh is Yahshua Messiah. So that's what this chapter is talking about. But you really need to pick it up and go read it from the from John one. Um, but I'm going to have you repeat it now. Now we're talking about this word. Go ahead. John 1.14, and mm -hmm. the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So this word, this word of Elohim, and we always say in here, the word isn't some book flapping around. Because some people say this book is the, the Bible is the word of God. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's even um, sacrilegious to drop it to tear a page, you know, it's that kind of thing. They think the book is sacred, but what we're trying to tell you down here is it's this um, realization of how this Godhead works. That's what's considered holy and sacred, right? This is what's sacred, not some book flapping around. So we're talking about this word being made flesh. Go ahead, Scott. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, mm -hmm. and we beheld His glory. So He, this Word, where Elohim, was made flesh, and guess what? Guess what? It's not the first time He was made flesh. Mm -hmm. How about that? And that's, that's, a, that's a mystery um, that will knock your socks off. And how, as, as Bill was talking about fulfilling, He had to fulfill everything to the jot and to the tittle. And on the cross, when he gives up the ghost, he says what? Finished. He's finished, right? But guess what? He finished fulfilling everything he did while he was alive. Now what? Mm -hmm. He's got to go through and wait, he hasn't resurrected yet. He's died. That was finished. He goes on fulfilling. He's got to be buried. He's got to resurrect. Mm -hmm. He's got to appear unto the, right? Yeah. So it was finished in the flesh while it that body was there, but that body, look, and that's the point, right? It has to be a spiritual body or that resurrected body that goes and finishes the fulfillment, right? He's still fulfilling scriptures, and guess what? He's still fulfilling today, right? We don't always look at it that way. He is still fulfilling his purpose that was manifest up here, right? Yeah. So we beheld his glory. You still there, Scott? And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. That's the only begotten. That's what I meant to say over here on this chart. <clears throat> what was the difference of this being the begotten and this Son? Yeah. He's created. Created Son, right? That's the difference. This mystery of iniquity was a Son. It says right here, Son of Perdition. <clears throat> he was a Son. But he was a created one. Who created him? Mm -hmm. Right? Lord, he's diving into the 12th chapter. It was <clears throat> Yahweh that purposed him from the beginning as well. Yep. So there's a begotten son. In other words, where does a, a begotten son come from? Mm -hmm. The bosom. That comes, that comes from your being. Yeah. Right? This son was specially prepared. And this son... It was back here as well in a physical body before the spiritual one come along or the or the uh, the other physical one to fulfill under the law right that wasn't Joshua back there that was Yahshua again there's goes goes these names right putting the names where they belong <clears throat> we got them painted as Yahshua down here he's the one telling Moses right Throw down the rod, lift up the rod, you know, <clears throat> do all these things. And uh, while I'm on that, I just, you know, these uh, these lectures that are in the cloud thing there. Um, Dr. Kinley was talking about transubstantiation, and he was talking about how uh, these these priests uh, change the actual um, or change the wine in the bread into the actual body and blood of Yahshua, right? <clears throat> and <clears throat> they call it transubstantiation. Or there's a trans means movement. Something's happening, right? And of course he goes into all those things about you shouldn't, um, under the law, they couldn't, they couldn't eat anything with blood in it. 
It couldn't drink blood, right? Mm -hmm. So he goes into all those things. But then he says, where did I see it on the chart? Jannies and Jambres, right? He said, when, Jannies, when Moses goes in front of Pharaoh, he tells Moses to throw down his rod, and he does, and what happens to Moses' rod? Mm -hmm. turns, into turns into a what? Serpent? Serpent. Right? And then, so, see how you got them as his witnesses? Like, like um, some Bill was talking about, I think, over here. The law and the prophets were the witnesses. So he's got diviners or false prophets. <clears throat> and Dr. Kinley said, when they threw down their rods, guess what? He called that transubstantiation. That's what he was calling it. That when those rods hit the floor, that was uh, uh, just like they're trying to do now, that it was a transubstantiation that was going on with those rods back there. So, <clears throat> anyways... All this is going on in this migration. There's so much going on in this Moses chart. Aren't we? I mean, I'd say 95% of the time we're pointing to a chart. Isn't it that one? Yeah. There's so much going on here mm -hmm. to explain. Um, who was reading? I'm sorry. I was reading in Hebrews, the first chapter. Okay. Okay. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of Elohim worship him. And of the angels, he saith, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. So he makes his angels spirits and his ministers, his ministers as a flame of fire. Go ahead. But unto the Son he saith, thy throne, O Elohim, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. And isn't that what Moses comes down with? He comes down with Aaron's rod. And, and then coming up out of Egypt, he tells him, what? Hold the rod up. Mm -hmm. And as long as that rod is up. Mm -hmm. And that's what, and it, and it actually has a picture of it here on the Moses chart. Um, right in the middle of the, the spread here, you got an arm with that rod pointing up, right? Go ahead, mm -hmm. Deb. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, Elohim, even thy El, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Okay, can I have you repeat that? Mm -hmm. Thou hast loved righteousness. Thou hast loved righteousness. And hated iniquity. And hated iniquity. Therefore, Elohim, even thy El, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness. So your El, or Elohim, yep. has anointed, which is what happened to the priest, high priest over here, and the priest, in order to move into these other compartments, right? Mm -hmm. They had to be anointed, and anointed means... Mm -hmm. To be set apart. Well, what were they set apart from? All of Israel was camped around the outside of this, and we got some of the tents here. But if you could just imagine millions of people mm -hmm. tenting around this, <laughs> it's kind of hard to, you know. And there's uh, there's books that you know on charts and stuff where it shows uh, how those camps could be arranged with all the different. In fact, we got a. Do we still have a tribe chart? Yeah, we do. Somewhere we got a tribe chart that shows all the tribes on it. Mm -hmm. But so there was a whole lot of folks around here. But they were set apart from the other people. The, the Levit Levitical priesthood was specifically set apart to operate and put up and take down the tabernacle. Please read. And thou, Yahshua, in the beginning, hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. Okay. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall become old as a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and the years shall not fail. So he's just talking about folding things up like a garment mm -hmm. or a vesture, right? Mm -hmm. This thing's going to be folded up. And <clears throat> he's talking about these, these ministers um, that uh, uh, appear as a flame of fire, right? And that's what this gospel is like. It, it's, it's um, I think Paul talks about it in another place where his, he makes his ministers... As, as, where is it? Oh, okay. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make the enemies, thy, until I make thine enemies thy footstool? So he says, um, 
I'll make sit sit on my right hand and I'll make your enemies a footstool. Yeah. Right. How about that? How's that sound? Awesome. No enemies. Awesome. Right. I'll make uh, your enemies as a footstool. Go ahead. please. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Aren't they all ministering spirits sent forth to what? Deb? Mm hmm sent forth to minister for them to minister for them who shall be heirs who shall be heirs of salvation of salvation i'm going to have you repeat it one more time are they not all ministering spirits are they not all these ministering spirits right sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation sent forth to those that are going to be heirs somebody is an heir of salvation yep somebody is an heir of salvation and somebody isn't right somebody isn't that's right so that's why we come down to these classes we try to show you the importance of this information it seems sometimes like um you know, it, it's tough to operate in the world at the end of this age. You got things pulling you in every direction. But there's something, as Lloydy said, we have faith in a gospel that can save our souls. We know that much is true. We know there's something here in our midst. And don't think there's not an angels around. I mean, there's more you can go into on them, I know. Um, but look. These angels, Gabriel was sent down as a messenger. He was sent down to help carry out this purpose. Michael <laughs> shows up occasionally through the book as well. Now, he was up there. How did he get down here, right? There, uh, there's, a, there's a quote there that talks about they have entertained angels unaware, mm -hmm. is what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. If somebody... Is it Hebrews? Okay, that'd be great if you could. Hebrews 13 and 1. Okay, Hebrews 13 and 1. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. So you got to be careful entertaining, entertaining strangers, right? And you got that going on through the book all the time. You got somebody showing up that, you know, tells somebody something. And, um, you know, you got the prophets down through there. You got Daniel. You got David. You got these sons of Yahweh that stood by what was revealed to them at the time, right? And there's even, a, Paul talks about, I think it's Paul, where he says that even these angels have looked and desired to learn the things that we're looking looking at so even though gabriel and michael might be kicking around somewhere there could be others you know i've heard dr kinley name some that aren't even in the book i don't know if you ever heard that sometimes he lists these off like mm -hmm. rayfield and mm -hmm. he's got a bunch of them mm -hmm. i looked up a couple i didn't find them in the book i don't <laughs> right mm -hmm. but there are uh, 12 orders of angels right mm -hmm. supposedly so there's a reality of these angels, that there's something going on here, mm -hmm. and it's for our well-being, right? Yeah. Could you read it again, please, Scott? Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Just don't be forgetful to entertain strangers. You might come up to somebody you might not even like so much. But be careful of that. Why? For thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Some people have just entertained angels without even knowing who they were talking about. They might have been down, they might have been out, they might have been dressed funny. Who knows? You might have entertained an angel without knowing it. Is that it? Or was there more? Um, go ahead, go ahead, read. Okay. Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Mm -hmm. Marriage is honorable in all, in the bed undefiled. So I, I just want to say that, um, you know, you don't always know what somebody's going through. I know I've gone through things that people don't know about, right. and I'm sure you have too. Mm -hmm. So don't we have to give each other a little bit of latitude uh, f from each other? Because we really don't know right. exactly 
where that person's at as far as that. But what we do know is when we come down here, we are ministers to carry on this legacy, so to speak, of Yahshua and his bride. And we come down here, we feel as though when we hear this gospel preached, yes, that makes so much sense that we are part of the, that's the hope we have, that we're part of this great body that Yahshua has put together from the beginning of the age, right? That's right. right from the beginning, he's ordained this thing. Right. Um, I, I think I'll have you, um, is that good, Scott? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Can, can you jump back where you were, Deb? Mm -hmm. I just want to finish that up. And 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Sit on my right hand. Yeah, go ahead. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Aren't they sent forth, right, mm -hmm. as ministers and heirs of salvation? Go ahead. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Now, that's the problem. And when you talk to people, you just, you just want to grab them and say, you just don't understand how important this is. You need to give this the more earnest heed. You don't want to let it slip. When your transmission starts slipping, it's not a good thing to drive it. Don't let it slip, right? Yeah. Don't let this information slip. Go ahead, then. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast. If the word spoken by angels was steadfast. And every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Uh -huh. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by Yahshua and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Okay, uh, there's, there's so much there. <laughs> um, can I have you start it again? I'm going to interrupt you. Therefore, though. we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, right. lest at any time we should let them slip. Mm -hmm. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, right. and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Okay, right there, Deb, right there. Right? In other words, <clears throat> any of this negativity coming down through the Law and the Prophets, um, I think it says it, it says it somewhere else as well, that um, this mystery of iniquity, right, when it's manifest, I, I'm going to have you read it again, Deb, so I've got to pick okay. it up. Just, or if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, right. and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, yes. how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Okay, right there, right? And uh, what I was thinking of is uh, over in Jude, right? Where it talks about how um, that was an angelic war that was going on. Yeah. And that... Yahweh didn't let anything slide. They pick sides up there, yep. right? It says Satan and his host were cast out of heaven, which, right? Yep. So that means the righteous angels that fought for this same salvation, the same salvation we're fighting for, fighting, you know, being part of. The same, the very same one. But look, he's not going to forget the iniquity that, that came from these angels, right? In other words, they've got a place to go. They are reserved. Yeah, in ch everlasting chains. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, keep going then, I guess. Uh, That's Jude 1 and 6. Did you want that? Oh, yeah. Did you? Uh, yeah, let's go. Jude mm -hmm. 1 and maybe pick it up in 3. Yep. Mm -hmm. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation... It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the sons. Wait a minute. Peg read that right off the bat tonight, didn't they? <laughs> Sounds familiar. That's in our aims. Go ahead. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. So there are those of old, they kind of crept on in. You didn't catch them. You didn't see them coming in the back, right? They've crept in. Go ahead. They've crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Now look, before of old. 
Before of old, before all that, they were what, Scott? Mm -hmm. They were ordained to this condemnation. They were ordained to condemnation. Mm -hmm. They were set apart just for this. Yahweh knew just what he was doing by ordaining this mystery. Go ahead. Ungodly men, turning the grace of Yahweh into lasciviousness and denying the only Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Now that's his goal. He wants us to deny salvation. How many times have you ever thought, no way, this couldn't, no way, not, no. From Elbridge, come on, wheelies through Elbridge, the stuff that you've done when you're young, right? No way. You ever had that thought? Yeah. Right? Yep. Go ahead, Scott. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that Yahweh, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt... Yes, he saved those people out of the land of Egypt. Go ahead. Afterward, destroyed them that believed not. He destroyed them up here. He got up here. We're talking about wrath. Yahweh let it loose up there. He saves them, and they peed and moaned, right? They, they protested up here, and they fell because of it. After all that beauty that Yahweh showed them, the power that Yahweh showed them, they forgot about his power. They let it go. Right? Go ahead. And the angels, <clears throat> which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. Okay, so now, see, he's correlating this negative time back here with, uh, with those that protested. He's talking about now the angelic. Go ahead. He hath reserved into everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Yeah, I'll have you start it again. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. Yep. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness. He's reserved them. He's got a reservation in chains, right? <clears throat> Under darkness, these ages are depicted here as chained together, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they have, he has a reservation, a hotel with enough room for him and his angels. Go ahead. Unto the judgment of the great day. Unto the judgment of the great day, right? So when the Yahshua is revealed from heaven, this stuff is taking place. There's, it's a done deal already. He's got a place for that. And he's got a place for his bride. Right. And that's it. There's no, uh, what do the Catholics call it? Middle ground purgatory. Purgatory. <laughs> Limbo. Limbo purgatory, right? There's none of that. With, there's, yes, there's three to salvation. But when it comes to purgatory, it doesn't fit this purpose. I don't know where they got that one from. It doesn't, well, I know what they did it for because... They charge you money to pay to pray people out of purgatory, and that goes right into the coffers, right? Yeah. It's all about money. Um, uh, please read, Scott. I just want to get through that. <laughs> Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So, in other words, he's pulling back Sodom and Gomorrah, right? And how there's examples of how that came down through the ages. And you can just, you know, we talked about Babel there a few weeks ago, and how that 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 um, mystery of iniquity rises up, and, 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 and you just say, yep, there it is. But the world does not know that. These are mysteries that have been opened up down here, by our founder, Dr. Kinley. And hallelujah for that. Thank you for the time. Appreciate it. I'm sure how that comes out. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Well, thank everyone for being with us here this evening and for people that tuned in on uh, YouTube. We appreciate that. Y'all please rise for the doxology. And now unto Yahshua who alone is able to keep us from falling 
and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Yahshua, our Savior, belongs glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and for all times. So I'll say hallelujah. hallelujah.